Hello and welcome. I'm Ijoma Onyato. Tonight, parents of aid worker killed by Boko Haram insurgents Hawa Liman refuse to accept news of their daughter's death, demand return of her body as proof. Outrage trails killing of another aid worker by Boko Haram insurgents as federal lawmakers seek urgent action from the executive to ensure the release of persons still in captivity. Former Minister of Solid Minerals Development, Dr. Kaede Fayemi, promises better days for the people as he's sworn in as governor of Ekiti State for the second time. And Turkey widens search for clues to the disappearance of Saudi journalist Jamil Khashoggi as the U.S. Secretary of State meets with Saudi King in the yard. On business news tonight, federal government seeks to fast track completion of infrastructural projects across the country through its public-private partnership arrangements. And on sports news tonight, Odion Igalos scores twice as the Super Eagles of Nigeria beat hosts Libya to go top of Group E of the 2019 African Cup of Nations qualifying series. And from Abuja, former governor of Ekiti State, Ayodele Fayoshe, makes good his promise. Reports at the office of the EFCC in Abuja. We begin tonight with the reaction of disbelief from the parents of the aid worker Hawa Liman to the news of her death after the story emerged along with a video showing her execution by Boko Haram terrorists on Monday. The midwife working with the International Committee of the Red Cross was kidnapped in Kalabalge, local government area of Borno State in March this year along with two of her colleagues during a raid on a military facility. Her parents are asking the federal government to investigate the origin of the story and present the facts to them. The Borno State Governor, Kashim Shatima, has also led a state delegation to commiserate with the family. From outside, it looks like just another ordinary day. That is until we make our way into the compound of the Lehman family and we see that all appearance of normalcy is replaced by anguish and disbelief. When their daughter, Hawa, an aid worker with the International Committee of Red Cross, was abducted along with her colleagues by Boko Haram in March, there was some hope from the federal government that the matter will be resolved without any problems. But the news this family has received of their daughter has them shattered. How could she be dead? Her father refuses to accept this. And in fact, we are in doubt because unless we see her corpse or any evidence that shows she is dead, we still believe that she's living. Pictures of Hawa are what her mother has to show. What she would give to see her daughter again. She brushes away the thought that her daughter is no more. Up to this moment, my mind has not told me that my daughter is dead. Because if you see what happened, these people want money. Now, after Buhari agreed that he would give the money, why is the gap between when he gave his consent and when this incident happened so close? On a condolence visit is the state governor, Kashim Shatima, his words come with some difficulty. It was quite devastating. This is a young girl who paid the ultimate price for the sake of humanity, for the sake of our people. But to the killers, they are stern. The demented monsters called Boko Haram, inshallah, in the fullness of time, they will pay a very heavy price for their crimes against humanity. The pain this family feels will linger for a very long time as each member will hold on to their last encounter with Hawa before the day she was snatched from them. Meanwhile, the president has commiserated with the family of the aid worker Hawa Liman who was killed by Boko Haram terrorists. 
President Muhammadu Buhari today conveyed his condolences when he spoke with Ms. Liman's family in a telephone conversation. These details were reviewed in a statement from the President's Senior Special Assistant on Media and Publicity, Mr. Garba Shehu. President Buhari assured Hawa's father that the Nigerian government did everything possible to save his daughter's life, frowning on the fact that all efforts turned out unsuccessful. He also extended his condolences to the President of the ICRC on the loss of the aid worker. The President commended the ICRC for providing health care services to victims of insurgency in some of the most affected areas. He appealed to the organization to continue its services in the country and not give up, despite the unfortunate loss of their member of staff. Federal lawmakers have challenged the executive to urgently commence further negotiations for the safe release of some of the women still being held captive by insurgents. This position followed consideration of a motion of the House of Representatives sponsored by Mr. Chike Okafo on the need to take steps to rescue the remaining captives. Considering the same matter, the Senate also asked the federal government to take necessary measures to secure the freedom of Leah Sharibu, who was kidnapped in Dabchi, and others being held hostage. Our correspondent, Lanre Lassisi, reports. Members of the Senate observing a two-minute silence in honor of aid worker Hawa Liman, who was reportedly executed by Boko Haram insurgents. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, this followed a motion raised by the Deputy Senate President, Senator Ike Ekwere Madu. You also recall that one of our own colleagues was also killed in September in similar circumstance. She too, an aid worker. So one of our prayers is that this time, instead of observing one minute silence, we should be able to observe two minute silence over the death of these young people. And I believe that we have to send our condolences and heartfelt sympathy to their families and of course to the international community and the rest of mankind. After the short debate that followed, the Senate resolved to pay a yes, condolence a visit to the yeah. family of the diseased. The lawmakers also resolved to ensure that the federal government, through its security agencies, take necessary measures to secure the freedom of both Leah Sharibu and the other surviving aid worker being held hostage by the insurgents. Of the abductees, the House of Representatives, a similar motion was considered. It is unfortunate to note that despite the negotiation initiated by the government for the self-release of these innocent Nigerians, the Boko Haram said, decided to tow the path of tragic execution of two of the captives. If we don't know the causes of this and be able to nip them in the board, it will continue to reoccur. We must begin to exercise the powers that we have. The primary function of any government, including all of us seated here, that the present government under President Mohamed Buhari, having failed to take care of these issues of insecurity, not only in sections of this country, but in the entire country, that the time has come for him to honorably resign, because that is his primary function. The lawmakers are urging the executive to, as a matter of urgency, commence further negotiation for the safe release of the women who are still being held captive by the insurgents. They also want the government to intensify efforts in collaborating with other countries to acquire advanced technology that can help in the fight against terrorism. Landry Lassese, Channels Television News. In the meantime, members of the Bring Back Our Girls movement have staged a silent protest from the Unity Fountain to the State House Abuja, demanding justice for murdered aid worker Hawa Liman. Ms. Liman, who was killed by Boko Haram on October the 15th, was one of the three aid workers kidnapped at Ran in Borono State on March the 1st, 2018. Speaking at the event, the coordinator of the Bring Back Our Girls movement, Edith Yassin, demanded that President Buhari fulfill his campaign promise of ensuring justice for victims of the insurgency. Our correspondent, Kayla Megwa, reports. The tears flowed freely at the Unity Fountain. It's a day of mourning as the country woke up to the news of the killing of a second kidnapped aid worker by Boko Haram, just as the terrorist group had threatened. Alice Loksha Ngada, a 25-year-old nurse working for UNICEF, Sefura Kosa Ahmed, a 25-year-old nurse with the Red Cross, 
and Hawa Mohamed Liman, a 24-year-old midwife at a government health center supported by the Red Cross, were kidnapped in Ran on the 1st of March 2018 after a raid by Boko Haram. 30 days ago, Saifura was killed by Boko Haram. The group had, at the time, threatened to kill Hawa, and they did on 15th of October 2018. Alice is still in Boko Haram custody. The Bring Back Our Girls group is staging this protest, demanding justice for the victims of this decade-old insurgency. A moment of silence is also held for the soldiers who have lost their lives in the war on terror. A barricade of police officers stopped the protesters from making their way into the presidential villa. Following the, loss of Hawa. the coordinator of the Bring Back Our Girls movement sends a message to President Mohamedou Buhari. Our advocacy for the federal government to rescue our 112 Chibok girls, Leah Sharibu, Alice, and all other abducted persons in the custody of terrorists shall not cease until they are all brought back. Within the coming weeks and months, we shall constantly take actions to press on with our demands. We shall not give any reprieve to President Buhari. These three women moved from being helpers of the vulnerable to being vulnerable themselves. The main question being asked here is how a terrorist group could threaten to kill a citizen of Nigeria and carry out that threat with no consequence 30 days after. Kayla Magwa, Channels Television News. Meanwhile, the International Committee of the Red Cross has reacted to the killing of its second aid worker by the Boko Haram factional group, ISWAP. According to ICRC Regional Director for Africa, Patricia Danzi, the ICRC was asked to pay a ransom for the release of Hawa, but refused to do so, as it would set a dangerous precedent for the 16,000 aid workers it deploys in 80 countries worldwide. She adds, quote, When healthcare workers are captured or abducted, there is always a demand. We are a humanitarian organization, so we cannot enter into such kind of negotiations. So we always ask for unconditional release, and that's what we did. That was the plea, and we believe that there is no course that can justify the execution of a young healthcare staff. End of quote. She says the ICRC does not have a plan to suspend its operations in northern Nigeria or to withdraw, but will have to rethink what it can do with respect to the security of its personnel. In part two, after the break, we'll take another look at the troubling state of affairs there. I'll be joined by a retired military officer and security expert, Major General Cecil Esekaigbe, as well as the PDP governorship candidates in Oshun State, filing a petition. And we'll have more of that when we come back. <laughs>